Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I'll try to hold this close enough to uh, everybody here, and, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to go on the conference. Um, if I'd have known how long the plane flight was before we before we headed out, I'd probably reconsider. That was was quite the, quite the ordeal. But, but uh, what a, what a cultural difference! Uh, if the first thing that we definitely encountered was um, it's definitely not America, and their their level of water science and water security is at such a significant level. It was it was quite a learning opportunity. Um, there was. Thousands of folks that, that came basically over to the Watak conference, and there's it was set up the Israeli con the consulate hosted us to come over. So we had several tours set up throughout this event, as well as going to this this technology conference. And they had all these vendors, and they were set in, in three primary focus areas. They had their their new idea or technology concepts, their early innovators or folks searching for venture capital. Um, and proven water technologies in huge pavilions, uh, more like a, a Bartle Hall situation. Um, Tracy had kind of went over a few of these things. Obviously, the governor um, was the first choice, and we were B teamers, but, but we appreciated that opportunity um, to go attend the conference. And, and we've actually had the opportunity to participate in the, in the vision as far as Tracy and myself and Susan and several others. Uh, carrying out that effort throughout the last several uh, several months. Technology interesting. I was just trying to highlight there were so many different things that we went through while we were over there. Um, what are some things that were common to Kansas um, that they had issues with uh, the Mediterranean and, and Israel? Salinity in the Equus beds. Um, we have our Burton Intensive Groundwater Use Control Area, which is a regulatory scenario under the Appropriations Act, and Don happens to be here in the crowd today, and, and uh, I'll have a little bit of stuff out of his April 12 report. Brine, salty surface water, whether it's Wilson or other areas of the Dakota Formation, um, as we continue to search and we're addressing our water needs, where, what do we have for existing supplies that are maybe not usable supplies at this point, and how do other countries address those particular concerns? Um, agricultural irrigation efficiencies, water treatment, reuse technologies in gray water, public water supply system, maintenance and leak detection. Um, it's a pretty phenomenal technology. Just a couple overviews in, in Dr. Whittemore's study. The executive summary basically highlights it, that basically in the 30s, uh, a saltwater disposal from oil exploration in the 1930s created a their, their silt ponds or their seepage ponds seep salts down in, into that formation right there just north of the Wichita well fields. Um, a lot of study in, in Dr. Whittemore's effort there, and there's actually been a USGS study in that just recently released as well. Um, basically, the outcome of that was that we needed to institute an intensive groundwater use control area. Um, Dave Pope was the, the chief engineer during that period in 1984. And they instituted the, the actual Iduka, which is a six mile by six mile boundary. Uh, the Burton plumes migrated eastward in the deeper portion of the aquifer with time. It's, it's slow moving, but it is moving. Substantial clay layers within the aquifer restricted the rate of movement. The front of the plume, and it has variable rates according to, the, to a couple of the studies that are out there in that 500 milligrams to about 2,000 milligrams of chloride per liter. In 82 to 2010, it was advancing about a foot a day to the east. Total migration of approximately a mile and a half to two miles to this point. This is an overview from, from the study itself, and that shows obviously the Equisbeds uh, Groundwater Management District right there. And there's the oil play of the Burton oil field. And then the Iguka is this perimeter boundary, and, and as you can see right there, the Wichita well field. That's an extrapolated view of what the, the, the water quality data was showing where the plume and the concentrations are. You can see the, the chlorides um, as well as the, the, the size and the depth of the formation. One, two, three hundred feet, six miles, seven miles in that graph and up to, to 2,000 parts. Desalinization technology. 
Um, we, we had the opportunity to, to go through this particular flagship, their original desalinization plant, um, which was the biggest RO facility I've ever been through. Basically, it was about 100 yards wide in Allen and, and a kilometer long, um, just in the scale, probably 50 feet tall for that length. And it was a cycling, recycling RO system. What I've got here, in, instead of trying to explain it, they actually have a couple of YouTubes from this particular vendor that built these three plants. Israel has about 7.2 million people, and 75% of their population is water. Basically, have all their public water supply from salt water out of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, they run their delivery line basically five kilometers out into the Mediterranean to prevent any wave action, any of the, the turbidity, the suspension that occurs. So their intake line is five kilometers out into the ocean, and then they discharge at a different point on the tidal flows. So as they take their concentrated flows, they re-inject it back out into the Mediterranean. Susan, if you would hit that. Heidi is a leading company in water desalination, water treatment worldwide. We've been conducting projects over 400 today in the last four decades in more than 40 countries. It was awarded Company Desalination of the Year by GWI and is highly committed to uh, water treatment worldwide. This will force us to come with a very efficient system because every cent that you save out of the cost is going to say in the profit. Uh, that really means initially the most important factor to save is on energy and on that we developed a very substantial capability on running energy efficient plants. We are proud to be chosen to present at the Innovation Expo of UNED organized by Climate Action. Uh, our new innovation ID program ID program is a small containerized RO water desalination plant that is carried to three refugees. In many domains, you have the challenge whether you are picking a green solution or whether you are going to traditional solution that is less expensive. In the desalination.